If you've been following my channel for a while now, you've probably also been spending your years following contradictory and super complicated diet information, and you're probably effing fed up. You probably have past or present grievances about your body. You maybe still have some hangups about specific foods. I want to hop in super quick to tell you about today's sponsor, Cook Unity. So before I had kids, I used to find a lot of joy in lovingly preparing multi-course meals from scratch and going shopping for ingredients and baking bread on a random Tuesday. Yeah, those were the days. And now with two kids under five, hard no. So when we're down south in the States, we always stock up on some of the creative signature meals from Cook Unity. So Cook Unity has over 50 talented chefs from some of the best restaurants in the country working out of regional micro kitchens instead of massive production facilities. So you feel like you're getting a restaurant meal at home. Basically, you let them know what you like and what you don't like, and you get to pick a flexible meal plan, so as few as four or as many as 16 meals per week. Then you can select from hundreds of meals that align with your preferences and dietary restrictions, including keto, vegan, gluten-free, low sodium, and more. And they use really high quality chef-driven ingredients. The meals are delivered fresh, not frozen, in compostable, recyclable, or reusable packaging, along with expiration dates, heating instructions, and nutrition stats. And then a few days before your delivery, you get a text to make your selections for the next week. It feels like one huge thing off my plate that I just cannot screw up. Some of my favorites from my last haul were the chicken thighs with braised grapes and olives by chef Michelle Bernstein and the orichetti with broccoli rabe and vegan Beyond Meat sausages from chef John DeLuce. Oh, and also the Thai quinoa and veggie salad from chef Andres Mendez. But the menu rotates constantly with a wide range of different cultural flavors and preparations, so it really helps to fill the gaps with inspiring fun meals for those nights when I just like can't. So if you want to try Cook Unity out yourself, go to cookunity.com slash Abby or click the link in the description and use my code Abby50 to get 50% off of your first order of meals. At the start of my intuitive eating journey, I had a lot of what we call fear foods, aka basically foods that you think about nonstop and you fear that you can't control yourself around when you finally let yourself have a taste. Also guys, it's really important to note here that not all meals or snacks need to be perfectly balanced hunger crushing combos. Sometimes you just want straight up McDonald's fries and that is a-okay. This is not a set of rules, it's a framework, and it only works when the intention is self-care. But for some reason, I was particularly obsessed with sugary cereal. So as part of my recovery, I started to make myself eat cereal every day. I started with it basically just like straight up in a bowl with some milk, just like I would have done when I was a kid. And I tried to collect data on how having that bowl of Lucky Charms made my body feel. And how it made me feel usually when I had like a big bowl of it just straight up was a little sluggish, kind of constipated, and most importantly, still hangry as so I therefore was forced to spend even more time thinking about food. Mmm, still so good. Now, I would never have been able to hear this qualitative and quantitative data from my body when my mind was barking so loudly in a state of deprivation and denial. So this was a really huge leap forward for me. And once I had effectively knocked cereal off its pedestal and neutralized its power, I was able to find little ways to harness the emotional satisfaction piece of eating cereal, but also master the physical satiety piece. And that's how my hunger crushing combo was born. If you're an OG or regular subby, you probably have heard me use the term my hunger crushing combo. This is an evidence-based additive gentle nutrition framework that serves as an alternative to all of the rigid rules that have failed you in the past. Most diet advice that we're familiar with is ground it in restriction and denial. So, you know, cut out sugar, gluten, snacks, whatever. This keeps us trapped in what we call scarcity mentality, which almost always results in overeating or full out binge. In order for a healthy diet to be sustained, it needs to be physically satiating and emotionally satisfying, which is essentially why my hunger crushing combo works. By adding a source of fiber, protein, 
and healthy fats, AKA my hunger crushing compounds to the foods that you love and crave, you're ticking both of those critical boxes. You get to have your cake and feel good eating it too. Mm. These days I eat cereal several times a week. And usually this is how I do it, with Greek yogurt or cottage cheese for protein, some berries for our fiber, and either some nuts or seeds for healthy fats. It tastes good and it feels good. Which brings me to your fear foods. So as usual, I surveyed you guys on my community page for your fear foods that you'd like to see me turn into hunger crushing combos. Now I've done a whole series of these videos, so you can check out my description to see if your fear food has already been done in a previous video. But we are back at it with another round of really fun balanced meals and snacks. And I'm hungry, so let's eat. Mm. Mm. All right, first up, orange juice. As you can see, we already opened it up, had a little taste tester this morning. And you know, if I'm honest, orange juice was definitely a fear food for me too, or basically any drink that had calories. Um, I just saw that as the absolute devil, you know, just pure poison. And as I discussed in my food rules video right here, I still don't actually drink a lot of juice. And that's because when I allowed myself to drink said juice, I realized that I actually didn't like it that much. I don't like the film that it creates in my mouth. I don't know what it is. So at this age, I've got very sensitive teeth. So the thought of drinking any kind of beverage that's like highly acidic or sweet, just gives me the heebie-jeebies. Like I just know I'm gonna have to be sitting with a mouth tray of desensitization gel all night. So I try to avoid. But what I do love is me some orange creamsicle anything. So let's make ourselves a little hunger crushing combo based around some OJ. Usually protein shakes in my house are based around like a milk or a plant-based milk of adding some kind of like juicy fruity liquid and i see it all the time in juice bars and smoothie bars so we're gonna work with it so i've got a little bit of greek yogurt here i use like a higher fat greek yogurt we've got some protein we've got some healthy fats in there i've got some sweet potatoes tons of fiber lots of vitamin a and we have finished something off in my freezer thank god does anyone else like hoard bags of frozen like little bits of frozen fruit and vegetables it's not good so i'm always so excited when i finally get to finish off a container. All right, I got a ripe banana that's gonna add lots of sweetness and a nice body. I've got some more protein with some vanilla protein powder, some healthy fats with some, oh. It's always scary when I finish a container of hemp hearts because I'm like, do I have a backup? I'm just gonna hope I do. So hemp hearts for healthy fats. And sidebar, a lot of people ask me, what is a healthy fat to you, Abby? And this is a great question. Like I don't have qualifiers for healthy carbs or healthy proteins. For me, healthy fats is basically anything that's not a highly processed trans fat. I wanna clarify healthy fats there because I wouldn't aim to be adding in, you know, like a deep fried batter as your source of fats in that meal. Of course, it's still going to contribute to satiety, but the idea of this framework is also to help you get in a variety of whole nutritious foods so that you're not only meeting your macros, but you're also going to be hitting those micros as well. So I hope that clarifies that for you. All right. So, so far, everything's in here. Now I'm going in with our OJ. Do, 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 do. That looks good. And we can always adjust this after the fact too. Let's get her creamy. Yum. Okay, let's recap. So we have protein in our protein powder and Greek yogurt, healthy fats in the hemp parts and the Greek yogurt because I used a higher fat option, which is key. It gives it such great body and a really nice flavor and consistency. And we have some fiber in the sweet potato that I added as well. And most importantly, guys, this tastes like the creamsicle little popsicles that you'd get from one of those creepy ice cream trucks that drive through your neighborhood. Mmm, oh my God, this is so much better than that. Don't come at me, but this, easier on my teeth too. Elder millennial approved. Okay, next up, croissant. I'm gonna really offend some French people today, but I feel this, I feel this. 
You know, when I was really afraid of fats and butter, croissants or croissants definitely felt like a scary indulgence to me. So I totally see why so many of you list this as one of your top fear foods. But then I went to Europe and I realized that people ate croissants every single day and nobody felt guilty about it. So let's channel that European vibe today and make ourselves a bougie ass sandwich. Let's do it. So I've got some sun-dried tomato pesto here going down. That's a great source of fat because it's got nuts in it and it's delicious. Mm, the flavor. It's kind of like a bougie mufalada, but it's not. Um, all right, we're gonna go in with some more healthy fats, some avocado. Avocado, nailed it. Now I've got some provolone cheese and some chicken for our protein. Oh, can't forget some greens, folks. A little greenery is the hardest part. Guys, I don't think you appreciate how hard it is to perfect the art of sandwich making. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Like this takes talent right here and a lot of patience to get every single greenery piece to perform. Okay, somehow I have to combine these without a casualty. It's a trap. Trapped. Now that is way better than just like a Starbucks croissant. Am I wrong? Let's eat. Guys, I'm pumped about this. I'm super pumped and I think it's gonna be really good. So let's talk about it again. So we've got healthy fats in our pesto and our avocado, protein in our chicken and our cheese, and some fiber in the avocado and our greenery. And we got a croissant. Mmm. Mmm. You know, the pesto, mm, hits. She hits hard. Hit me, baby. <laughs> Donuts. A lot of you guys said donuts, and again, I feel that. I feel like donuts is top three desserts for me. It's like sticky toffee pudding, number one, a really good yeast donut, and three would be like a killer New York style cheesecake. I don't know, maybe I've got some more inspiration to go on for our next episode. But when I started to eat donuts more often, I realized that I really don't feel the need to finish even one whole donut in most occasions. Sometimes I've got a killer donut appetite and I don't judge myself, but I saw these cute little donuts and I was like, you know what? That's like a perfect size donut for me. And there's sprinkles on top. And my kids are gonna be very happy when I share a few of these with them this afternoon. Poppy, not you, not you. Not this child, no child. It has chocolate. Sorry, baby. Mean mom. Also just having a donut for breakfast, I know would not keep me satiated and satisfied. So if you're going through the drive-thru and you need your donut fix, let me show you how to hunger crush and combo it up. All right, let's make a little fun breakfast bento box. I love a little snackable meal. So. We got our donut. I've got some hard boiled eggs here, some whole grain crackers. I've got some pistachios. We're gonna throw a variety of different kind of like fruits, strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries. And I don't know about you guys, but I would be very excited to show up to work with my little coffee tumbler and this snack pack masterpiece. Let's recap. Let's check it out, folks. We've got protein in our eggs, healthy fats in our pistachios, lots of fiber in our fruits and our whole grain crackers, and we got sprinkles. Tabby? She's into it. Mmm. Oh, it's chocolate filled. Mmm. It's like a perfect little snack. Love this journey for us. Oh, Nutella. This was another big one. And it's also one that for me, it's just like such a super uber sweet food that I just obsessed over because I knew it had so many calories. But now that I'm allowed to eat it, I've kind of lost interest. And I think this is again, probably cause I'm just getting older and my palate's changing and my teeth are sensitive. And I just can't bring myself to like put a spoonful of this in my mouth, knowing the pain that it will inflict. That said, 
I f***ing love Nutella flavored desserts. Like if it's on a menu, I am going for it. So let me show you how I make some super easy protein energy balls using the flavor and sweetness of Nutella, but packing in that fiber, protein, and healthy fats. Let's do it. We splurged on some Casco hazelnuts. And I say, I wouldn't have bought them if they weren't on sale because they are effing expensive. We've got rolled oats. One, two, three. Tons of fiber right there. I've got some vanilla protein powder. You could easily use chocolate here as well. I just have vanilla. Uh, let's say, let's say. Some more hemp parts. I found more. It would be a sad day if I didn't have a backup pack in the pantry. Let's get some peanut butter here going because it's cheaper than hazelnut butter. Looks about right. Whoop. Get that in there. Oh, there's nothing like a fresh foil wrapped container Nutella. Check that out. Mm. Smells like Italy to me because I consumed Nutella flavored everything when I was in Italy. So good. All right, a couple tablespoons of that. Oh. But yeah, my teeth ache just like looking at a spoonful of that. It's probably good. We want to impart all that Nutella flavor. Um, oh, look at that. But of course, I don't want my teeth to like ache for days. So I think that's going to be good. Mm, 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 mm. We need some salt. Bring out that flavor. Flavor. I think I need some vanilla. Tiny splash. All right, now we pulse. Just something to bring this together. A couple of tablespoons. Oh, but I taste all oh, the Nutellas. She good. Okay, now I'm gonna pulse in some chocolate chips. So we got big balls, small balls, squishy balls, abnormally shaped balls. We don't discriminate here in Abby's Kitchen. It's not about the size of the ball. It's what you do with it. That's what my husband says anyway. <laughs> mm. It smells so good, guys. All right, let's recap. We got tons of healthy fats in the hazelnuts and the nut butter and the hemp parts, plus protein in all the nuts and seeds, as well as the protein powder, as well as a lot of fiber in our oats. And we got Nutella. Mm. Oh my God, this is good. Mm. Full Nutella experience without the aching teeth. That's my jam. Mm. Mm. It's so good. No woman, no cry. M&M's. Actually, these are Smarties because I buy the ones without the artificial food dyes and I don't know if M&M's do that yet, but same diff. Same diff? Same deal? Same, same? <laughs> same, same, but different? Whatever. I got a lot of requests for M&Ms on my community page, and I just happened to have a ton of them left from my son's birthday party. So this seemed like an opportune time to turn them into a hunger crushing combo. And one of my favorite ways to eat M&Ms is in pancakes. Like when you go to one of those like diners, they always have M&M pancakes on the menu. It's just so nostalgic. It's so fun. My kids are obsessed. So I thought, why not make M&M pancakes, but with a little protein upgrade. Let's do it. So these days there's like a million different protein pancake mixes on the market. I'm just using the one that's easy and accessible for me. But I've got a little simple way to upgrade it just to boost the nutrition even more. So we got our protein pancake mix down. I'm gonna add a generous handful of wheat bran. Basically, I add this to any of my baked goods, especially if I'm gonna give them to the kids because it's a great source of fiber and it's very inexpensive to buy a whole big bag like this. Also, since I've got the hemp hearts out for basically every other recipe, I'm gonna throw some of those down too, some healthy fats. And for some natural sweetness, I've got a ripe banana. All right. And we're just gonna kind of eyeball this. I'm using a pea protein milk because again, just gonna bump up the protein even more. And we mix her up. Get them chunks out. All right, 
I like little baby mini pancakes also because I struggle with flipping them. So it's lower risk. Let's get one of these down. They don't need to be perfect circles, guys. Don't judge me for. Then we're gonna throw down some of the colorful ones. Even though I know that the natural food dyes typically, they don't survive the heat so well. And FYI, I'm not fear mongering food dyes. If you can tolerate them, you do you. Me and my son are just a little bit sensitive. So I typically try to avoid them when I have the option. I'm heavily curating each pancake and I'm the only one in the house who's gonna give a You need a green. It's a weird looking green. Looks like a pukey green. That one's a nice green. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The anticipation is killing me. You think if I watch it, it'll cook faster? Very nervous. I always feel so much pressure while making pancakes in front of an audience. It always works out better when I'm alone. It's like they know. Oh, all right. Ready? Whoa! Turned out pretty good. Perfect. Awkward flip angle. Ugh. Nice. All right, down. Nice. Nice. I've come this far, guys. I can't f it up now. I got the beat going still. That's a good sign. Okay, the kid in me is very excited right now, but I also feel like we can upgrade it just a hint to make it a even more balanced, nutritious meal. So I typically like to put little Greek yogurt on top of my pancakes or waffles. I've got some berries here. Throw these guys down. Well, if they wanna hang out. And I've got some almonds for a little crunch factor. And personally, I think that these are probably sweet enough that I don't need a whole lot of maple syrup on top. But since she's here, it does make for a delicious looking hero shot. Ah! I'm so excited. Okay, let's recap guys. We have protein in our protein pancake mix plus the Greek yogurt on top. Healthy fats in some of the hemp parts I added, plus the almonds on top as well. And fiber in the pancake mix, plus the added wheat bran. That is key. It's such an easy addition you can add to any of your baked staples. And I also added some berries as well. Mm. This is so good. Oh, got to get everything in. Mmm. The M&M just like melting in my mouth. I'm here for that. Yep. Nothing to be scared of here, folks. Mm. So many delicious recipes, so much great inspiration. And let this be another reminder that you do not need to make every meal or snack an HCC. My hunger cushion combo is not a rule. It's a framework that's designed to help you uniquely feel your best. And sometimes a handful of M&Ms just hits different. And that is a-okay. So if you guys like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on some of your fear foods that you want to see me turn into hunger crushing combos. Hit up the link below if you want to get my exclusive handbook on hunger crushing combos. And I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.